everybody, and welcome to Azure Lowlands 2023 on the panels. We're sitting here today on the sofa with some amazing guests, and together with Callum White and I, we will be your panel host for this session. So let's head over to talk about the future of cloud, the future of Microsoft Azure, with our guests that are sitting here. So let's quickly introduce them. Magnus, Laura, tell who you are, where you're from, what you do. So I'm Magnus, I'm from Sweden, I'm an Azure expert. I've been that for a very, very long time, so some people claim that I have something to say about the future of Azure. We'll see how that goes. My name is Laurent Bunion. I work uh, for Microsoft in Azure uh, for about six years now, so a little bit less long than you, and I'm not sure why they pair me with him, but I'll be here. So you're, you're the, you're the, 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 the intel good, intelligent right? and good-looking one, that's you. I'm not sure about and that. I'm just a yeah, uh, yeah, well, seat filler. We'll yeah. see about that. Yeah. Well, welcome. It's amazing uh, to have you here and, of course, to uh, pick your brains and hear about your uh, expertise and your predictions. But before we go to the future, I just want to look back to the past. Like, what was the first time you heard about Azure or worked with Azure? Do you want to go first? Uh, sure, yeah. I mean, uh, back then, I was actually not in that field at all. Um, and I, I was a, a, a Microsoft MVP and a regional director for a long time, um, but more in the client side, actually. Mm -hmm. And um, regional directors are amazing people. They are not paid by Microsoft. They are partners. Um, but they are very, uh, you know, clever people, if I may Gosh. say so, <laughs> even though I was one myself and you are one. Um, and, and, and they kept talking about the cloud. And so I was in my head thinking, if I want to continue, you know, a successful career in software, I should probably look into that. Yeah. And back then, I was not working for Microsoft at all. And, um, and one day, interestingly enough, I got a call um, from, uh, from somebody who had just been hired at Microsoft, my mm -hmm. good friend Scott Kate, um, who said, hey, we you know, create this new team. Would you like to join? And I said, are you sure you're talking to me? Because I don't know anything about the cloud, literally. And, um, and they said, yes, because uh, you're good at teaching. So you're going to learn the stuff, and then you're going to teach what you learn to people. And it was probably one of the best decisions of my life, to be honest. Not because it's Microsoft, but because at that time, I think the, uh, this conversion going from client application development, which is, a, let's face it, it's a little bit messy. Like, there are so many technologies, and, 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 and it changes all the time. And it, I was a little bit tired of that. And going to the cloud felt like, OK, that's really where, you know, where I, can, I, I can finish my career. Maybe, I don't know, I'm 52 now. I don't think I will reconvert to. And, and anyway, I did back end. I did front end. I'm kind of done now, right? So, so yeah, and uh, Azure is just um, amazing in the sense that I keep learning every day. Like, there are new services coming every day. Now, I feel that I understand you know, enough to be dangerous. But nonetheless, uh, always new things to learn. So it's a, it's a great time, yeah. Brilliant. What about you? So, yeah, um, interestingly, I was in the audience when they announced what was then called Windows Azure. That was the first announcement. I was at the PTC conference where that was announced, and I was standing there. I was, I was the kind of person that I liked architecture, and I kind of was like the API was my, my user interface, basically. So I was a server, server guy. I was on that side of things. And then Microsoft announced... Uh, the, uh, Ray Ozzy was the CTO at Microsoft at that point, and he, he, he was, I was there too. You by were the there, way. Yeah, 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 of yeah. Course, yeah. So he's walking on the stage, and he's he's like announcing a new service in the cloud. It's almost literally what he said, um, and and it was positioned as a service on the web tier of computing. That was like the understanding of cloud at that point. And so I was there at the in the audience, and I thought like this 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 could actually be something cool. Let's I'll look into that. And then I became the first uh, Azure MVP in the Nordics, uh, for first one that there was. And if I get uh, another renewal, it's happening now, right? Mm -hmm. Essentially, these very these soon, days, July sixth, yeah, yeah, right? Very soon. And if I do that, then I will have twelve consecutive Azure MVP titles. So I was there when it literally started. Yeah, that was cool. Wow. So, so I don't think you're quite claiming to be one of the uh, the fathers of Azure, but if, uh, twelve uh, years of well, uh, twelve years of contributions to to, uh, uh, to the to Azure, Azure community means sure. you've definitely had an impact. Uh, so, what I what I commonly say is that that I'm sure that there are people who are are much more skilled and better at doing Azure stuff than myself, but they haven't done it for longer. <laughs> so, 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 that. so I, I guess yeah, you're both perfect people to to talk to about what the future holds for. Uh, for, so. for Azure. So is there anything that you're right now particularly excited about in, in the Azure space? Like, is, is there a service or a, a kind of an innovation that's been happening that you're, you're particularly excited for? Uh, yes. 
Many. Um, I mean, personally, I'm a developer, so my focus on Azure, I, I'm not an infrastructure person. I have never been. I'm definitely not a security person. We had a, a great keynote about security, and, and I'm not that. But for me, it's really, um, what is exciting is really how quickly you can convert an ID into something which is actually working. Uh, and I'm not saying that it's, you know, the perfect solution that you're going to bring to market, but at least it allows you to try things really fast, right? So I, I love that very much. Um, and also, of course, uh, I mean, you know, who, I wouldn't work for Microsoft if I, if I didn't mention AI, right? So um, I think the official term that we are using right now is that we are infusing AI everywhere. Yeah. And, and so even services which are not, um, we, which you wouldn't necessarily think about, like for example, I use Visual Studio a lot as a developer, um, and, and you know, the, the, the AI services that they have inside there are just there. And it's funny because sometimes you don't even notice them, right? Like uh, they just pop up and then you're like, oh, that's cool, but you don't realize. So anyways, there, are, there, there is AI pretty much everywhere now. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's an exciting time to be a developer. I've been saying that for the past 25 years, I think, <laughs> probably. But, but I feel that this uh, acceleration of thing is a little bit scary sometimes also, to be honest, right? Uh, responsible AI is something that we need to absolutely uh, think about because, you know, in the wrong hands or in, uh, you know, with the wrong intentions, it can be really dangerous or even if people are just lazy. Um, but nonetheless, I think that there is really a, a big future there. So I, I like being in that space. It's really a fun space to be, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I, so I like how, obviously, bit from Microsoft, you're towing the company line. You're supposed to talk about AI right now, so that's why you're doing it. Well, I mean, <laughs> no, I mean, there is definitely something like that, but at the same time, let's face it, it's really exciting, right? I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm not, uh, you know, you know me, right? I'm no, not, uh, no. I'm, I've never been somebody who, who sells uh, the company line, no, like no, you no, say. No, no, no. It, it, it just happens, it just happens to be something which is happening right now. And the fact that we are. Yeah in the, you know, in the forefront of that and observing it all, yeah. Yeah. even if we are not experts or anything, it's, very it's exciting. really exciting. And what I, so I'm, I'm a sort of a Azure fundamentalist of sorts in, in a way that um, the, the basics still rule, the basics still apply, mm. because none of the services that, we, none of the fancy schmancy services that we see, all the AI and all the things, none of that could have ever been built without the fundamental cloud platform to stand on. That's uh, where I kind of live and breathe because uh, many of my customers are taking their uh, services and things to the cloud and they need to understand the basics. So I don't wanna like pull it all the way down to those basics, but um, you should talk about what you love and, and hopefully uh, love what you do. And I, I happen to, to be in that, that fortunate position uh, that um, all of those services, you know, coming to your question, what is, what is cool in Azure right now? Um, all of the services, all of the data and all of the th like security data and, and compliancy data, and, and we had uh, a great security keynote here at the conference, right? Um, all of that data is there. All of the services are in the platform, except we're not using them, uh, just generally speaking. We, yeah. we need to use them much more. So what I'm excited about is how these services keep evolving and keep getting better and better and better so that pretty much uh, they, they are coming to a for dummies, for dummies stage, right? Where you can just turn them on and they basically cover 98% of your issues mm -hmm. by, just, by just turning them on. But then there's, there's more than that and, and uh, I guess that's what I'm preaching mm -hmm. about, that people need to understand to use the services that are in the mm -hmm. platform. It's, they're already there. Yeah, one thing which is, um, <laughs> which is exciting right now in Azure, it's very anticlimactic, but it's basically the, incre the very incremental nature of change yeah. means that you probably don't have to relearn everything. Now, obviously, if you need a, if you need a new service, right, and I, I'm, I'm talking later about cloud native in the sense of, you know, building applications with components. And, to that and, point, exactly. Yeah, right. platform yeah, yeah. as a service, yeah. etc. So, obviously, suddenly you say, okay, I, I want to use, uh, I don't know, Key Vault, and I don't know Key Vault, you need to learn it, okay? But what I like is really, once you use a service, like if you use, I don't know, Logic Apps or Azure Functions, whatever, they keep adding new stuff, but it doesn't feel that they are breaking it. No. It's just incremental, and yep. suddenly you're like, oh, wow, okay, I can do that, this is cool, but the, the, the knowledge you had <coughs> remains. And again, coming yep. from client application development, where we have been through so many stacks of of web and, and mobile and you know Windows and Mac and etc. It's very refreshing actually to feel that because it's so much more stable. Yeah. I'm, I like that. Yeah. yeah, definitely. And that's that's the point, right? That that, that the fundamentals still really apply. Yeah.
from from the uh, from the angle of learning new things. So so how can we as uh, advocates for Azure, uh, be it in our companies or uh, or as your job, um, <laughs> how can we help people to consider adopting Azure and the cloud over, say, something like, I know mm -hmm. we're not allowed to talk about AWS or GCP, but sure. over one of those platforms, what, what makes Azure the choice? Why is that the exciting cloud to be on? Well, I, I mean, you know, I, I have tons of respect for our competitors, obviously. Um, I think that we all, we all win at that game. Keeps somewhat, you sharp. Somewhat. Mm? Yeah, yeah. It keeps you sharp. Yeah, absolutely. And, and really, there is tons of innovation in, in every space, right? So this is really cool. Um, one thing that I like, and it's not because, I, I mean, I was hired to do that, so I'm really happy that it happens, but I feel that our, our um, educational material is really yes. up there, you know? Um, and so I collaborate with the people at Learn a lot. So for those of you who don't know, learn.microsoft.com, right? This is where, where we have our training material. And uh, we have really a, a large crew of people who dedicate literally their day job to creating content, right? And um, it's, uh, it, it's not something that I necessarily see um, as much in, and again, right, with a lot of respect in our competition. Uh, I think that we really have people, and, and having worked with them, I mean, we just had builds three weeks ago, right? It's literally months of preparation. So we have, we have thousands of people who dedicate their day job for months in those difficult you know, financial times to create an experience where after that you can go online and at no cost find all the material, right? So I think that for anybody who is a student, who is a, a new learner or even an advanced learner, you, you can find really this material and this is really cool. I, I will say as well on that, on that note that compared to some other uh, cloud platforms. In all respect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, the documentation on, on Learn is so much more friendly in the sense that it will give you an example of how to do something in PowerShell. It will give you an example of how to do something with the Azure CLI, mm -hmm. but it will also give you the instructions of how to do that in the portal if you can do it in the portal. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas a lot of other platforms are saying, here is the script you need to run to get this to work. Yeah. And it's, it's not necessarily approachable or friendly <laughs> unless you unless you understand that, but, but yeah. it still comes with, comes with a learning curve. In all yeah, that's the, that's the developer, developer, developer thing. I'm not going to do the dance, don't be afraid, but <laughs> Balmer on stage, you know, shouting developer, 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 that's like the, uh, the, the DNA of Microsoft. And that was long before my time, but that's the main reason why I'm exciting to be there is because I feel we have respect for developers and, sure. and we really try to help them, yeah. Yeah, no, I agree with that. And it's just a funny anecdote from, from the documentation stuff though. Uh, in a production system, uh, I was, uh, they were complaining about some performance things. And uh, I, I looked into the, the types of re uh, requests that was going to Azure Storage account. And it turned out that uh, there were plenty, plenty of more requests than there should be. So I looked into the code and I, I realized that, hey, there, there's, there's too many gets on this thing here. And I looked at the code and sure enough, it was a, a literal copy paste from the sample uh, that they had copied and pasted the code and pushed that to production. So what they kept doing all the time was making a, a request to check if the container was available, if it was there. Okay. And they pushed that to production, which means that literally they're doing at least a third more uh, requests than mm. they ever needed. So that, those round trips, uh, added, they compounded, and then literally just remove that line, mm -hmm. and 30% performance right there. <laughs> so yeah, that, just that, enough documentation. So be, be careful about the documentation copy paste. I'm just just saying. enough documentation yeah, yeah, yeah. can make you very dangerous. Yes. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so yeah, Laura, I have to say you really do put your heart and passion into Learn Life. Um, yeah. How many shows have you done? Uh, I believe 254 wow. as of yesterday. Yeah, we That's are taking a little break now, um, but yeah, multiple times. Uh, a day, so that uh, multiple times a week. Sorry, so that's that's my day job. Really, it's uh, to produce that show. Thank you for mentioning <laughs> it. Uh, so ak.ms/learnlive. It's uh, it, it shows where we have really experts going through a, a learn module, and um, it, it's actually nice because I was checking the uh, the roster of speakers, and I was like, oh, I work with him, I work <laughs> with her, I work with them, you know, etc. And yeah. and uh, yeah, a lot of very diverse experts, and yeah, it's a, yeah. it's a good show. Yeah, definitely learn live. It also is the power of the community that we have, like you said, speakers from all over the world. And you, Magnus, you also create a learning platform. It's maybe not Learn Live or the Learn Documentation, but how about Global Azure? You want to tell us a bit more about that? I can do that, yeah, sure. So Global Azure is, uh, briefly, it's, it's a global happening for community. Uh, and it's fun in such a way that, that 
it's just lets any community for any reason uh, join uh, and learn about Azure. And we don't you know, subscribe or you, know, you should be talking specifically about this. It's more of a hashtag basically and a, and a website that brings us all together. Um, and, and the power of that is that during Global Azure, hundreds of communities literally around the globe um, everywhere are, are learning about Azure. And uh, the power of community is, is a, a completely crazy thing. We didn't know what we started when we did that. It, it was completely accidental uh, because we just said, hey, let's do, I was a freshly you know, minted, baked uh, uh, Azure MVP and, and if you're there, doing, you should be doing community things. So let's do a community mm -hmm. conference. Um, uh, and, and a friend of mine who was the second uh, Azure MVP in Sweden and he said, oh, I live in Stockholm and I live in Malmo. So let's, let's see what we can do with, with, with Azure together. Let's, let's, have a, an event on the same day. What if we do a remote session? And then was like, okay, hey, how about we ask? You know, we have some friends over in in, in the Netherlands, and we know those guys in, in in Belgium. And oh, that that you know that guy over in 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 uh, in uh, you know in um, in the London. And the first time we did Global Azure, we didn't know what we started, but it turned out the first year it was 93 locations in 36 different countries, uh, which was nuts. Uh, so it's all about community and excitement about learning about mm -hmm. Azure. Uh, that's that's what we do with Global Azure, mm -hmm. just for fun. Yeah, it's an awesome event. I mean, I, I try to speak every time at yeah. least one of them. Yeah. Uh, and I really like it. So now they, um, this year was uh, was in the, I, I mean, I went to the Munich one this yeah. year. Yep. Um, our friend Phil was organizing. Yeah, that was a good year. one, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and it was hybrid, so it was also nice because you have this uh, contact yep. with people and, uh, and being streamed, of course, is such an easy access. So yeah, kudos yeah. on that, yeah. Yeah, yeah thanks. I, I can say from hosting the London one that the, the breadth of the topics that we had was, yeah. was incredible. Yeah. So all in one space, all under this Azure umbrella, yeah. I can exactly. learn about an AI yeah. topic, uh, yeah. going to a security topic, going yeah. to, yeah. Uh, you know, how do I scale my web application and, uh, and everything in between. And, yeah. But the and passion, I, I didn't right? feel out of place. That's, it's that's still exactly passion. the passion is like, it's, it's by community for community. Mm -hmm. it's, it's people who are excited about technology and mm -hmm. they, they just can't shut up. And, and, <laughs> yeah, in, uh, and, and in, it's truly really global. Yeah. Green. In yeah. Munich, there was a, a talk to, to your point, right, about uh, how to code in an environmental friendly manner. And I thought it was so cool because the guy was really going into details like, for example, how do you improve performance so that you consume less CPU and then you end up consuming less power, right? Yeah, and so yeah, many, yeah. so many aspects. Wow. So yeah, it's really, uh, it's really nice, yeah. Cool. So I, I've been to the one in uh, Lisbon, which uh -huh. was also uh, really amazing. So speaking of the cloud and the future of the cloud, of course, we find it very exciting. It's very hot and happening. For those companies that are, let's say, they're fearing the cloud or they're afraid, it's like something scary. Like, what are the common fears that you hear about? And like, how do we make them, let's say, go away? Yeah, there's a, there's a big fear. Uh, for, for someone who maybe has worked in IT for many, many years. Um, they, they know about servers. They know how to like touch the hardware and be right there with it and, and like pull wires and things. Um, there's a real fear for some of these people. Maybe um, some of them coming towards the later part of their career, uh, some years from retirement, and now all of a sudden the, the company is changing for, for doing cloud things and they don't feel like they are included. Um, and that is something you need to be very mindful about and very respectful about because these people maybe have worked in the industry for 25 years. They're, they're experts. They know everything about what the world used to be like. Mm -hmm. And now they feel like they're losing their foothold. So um, bringing them along respectfully um, and, and just helping them to, to learn in a way that, that is useful for them, that is a, that is a bit of a challenge uh, mm -hmm. pedagogically. But... Um, and some people won't won't come along, but that so that is actually a real fear that I I am not included in that future, mm -hmm. and as as a guide to help someone come along, that's that's a, a handsome challenge to have. Mm -hmm. to can, say I, the least. can I can yeah. I propose propose a counter to that, which is what about these new fresh faces coming out of uh, universities, graduating who've never known anything other than cloud? How do we not lose some of that? <laughs> fantastic knowledge that these other people, yeah. that, mm -hmm. as you say, maybe nearing retirement age at yeah. this point. Yeah. How do we get everyone along for the, for the that's journey? That's right, it's, that's a challenge. Yeah, but one, um, one thing which is particular in software development, I believe, is that, and, and that I don't see in other professions so much, um, 
is that we can really gain benefit from talking to young people who are just out of uni because they learn stuff that didn't even exist when I was in engineering school, right? And, and, and I feel that this mutual respect between young generation and older generation is really important. So yes. the only advice I can give to people, because you're right, it's a little bit a train moment when the train was invented. Yep. Well, people who were selling horses starting losing their exactly. job, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 much. And, and, and so there is a little bit of that. But, but the advantage here is that really if you, if you kind of you know, open, <laughs> open a little bit and, and welcome this new blood, right, and talk to them and understand. And also another thing that should never be forgotten is that I don't know any firm that is 100% in the cloud. Like yeah. they are all hybrid. And I don't yeah. even know any firm who is 100% in one cloud provider. Like it's always multi-cloud, right? Correct. And so, um, so this hybrid aspect, and if, we, if only we had somebody who is managing the uh, Something hybrid, about Azure Arc? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who is managing some hybrid security <laughs> thing. So for those who don't know, um, is his husband uh, is, uh, is, is managing the program for that at, at yeah. Microsoft. Uh, but yeah, the, the, my point being that this can also be a very gradual migration, yes. right? And, and I don't believe in, in, in immediate 100% on the spot migrations. That it just doesn't work, right? So, no, doesn't so work. just think about migrating gradually. Maybe you can have some of your services there, mm -hmm. maybe some Azure functions to start with. They are not really frightening so much, you know? And once you understand how it works, then you can gradually go there. Mm -hmm. There's been some very good, some controversial uh, articles recently. Uh, I'll draw examples to Basecamp, who've uh, very publicly said, we're ditching all cloud, it's too expensive, yeah, we're going the yeah, exact yeah. opposite way, building our own infrastructure. Yeah. There was a recent uh, one from Amazon where they said about how they consolidated a <laughs> microservice uh, set up on for one of their prime video encoders yeah, yeah. to be a monolith yeah. and basically just running it on a big server or a, a farm yep. of servers. Yeah, yeah. And, and so that's it's an interesting scenario where companies are sort of finding actually where the, the yeah. right fit is. Cloud, all the things, probably isn't the right approach. I, I mean, it's not, uh, no. you know, it's, uh, there is no magical solution to any problem. This, this is tech, right? Yeah. It's engineering. Yeah. If you, yeah, there is never a 100% black or white solution, right? And, and again, right, I have ton, tons of respect for those experiences. Sure. And, and I feel that, okay, if you had that experience and, and, and it happened for you, that's fine, right? But at the same time, it doesn't mean that the same experience is going to happen to everybody, yeah, right? We also have tons of yes. success stories. I mean, that brings us back to exactly what we were talking about before, and, and it kind of makes a circle here, which is, which is convenient. Um, the point is, you need to learn about these things and, and, and the services, again, that are in the platform and, and the fundamentals. Uh, when you get that wrong, mm -hmm. um, you, your cloud experience can be really bad. Yeah. Um, and, and that is all based in learning experience and knowledge and trying things out. Um, so it takes time and, mm -hmm. and it might feel really uncomfortable. We haven't done this before. I don't know how to do this. And, and to that exact point, you have to learn about it gradually and get into it gradually. Um, be hybrid, because that's what it's going to be. Um, and, and then try to grow an experience that is positive. Mm -hmm. uh, when you throw everything into the cloud just because we need to go there fast, um, it's going to probably function, but it's not going to be great. Mm -hmm. um, it, and that experience can be expensive, feel insecure, uh, feel out of control and all the things. And that's kind of what, what is reflected in some of those articles. Like they, they tried uh, a full on approach and they got yeah. bit. And now it's the cloud's fault. No, it isn't. Mm -hmm. uh, you just approached it incorrectly, right? Yeah, I, I think one good advice that we can probably give to anyone is don't follow buzzwords. Oh, you know, yeah. uh, like AI. Be, I, I mean, and, and I mean, the case you, you mentioned specifically, microservices, you yeah. know, it was such a buzzword, right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so, yes, they can be very useful in some scenarios, but it's probably also uh, over engineering yeah. your solution in many yeah. cases. So, yeah. find, find a good compromise. And AI, well, same containers, thing. Containers, right? Yeah. That's, that's, oh, yeah. Uh, that's a wonderful one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We need a cluster of containers to run all our containers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Do you really? Do you really? Mm -hmm. Do you know that you need that? Mm -hmm. Or maybe you should do something else, yeah, yeah. right? Um, but that's the problem. You, you follow buzzwords that you're definitely going to get burned. Mm -hmm. We have a, a great session coming up a bit later today on common Azure traps. So uh, ah, yeah. tune in for that one. I'm sure we'll be covering a lot of the same sort that's of stuff. That's probably going to be um, a similar thing. We, yeah, yeah, uh, for sure. We, we've unfortunately reached the end of our, our time here, but you've both been wonderful guests. Thank you. And I'm sure these conversations will continue. Uh, Magnus, Laurent, thank you very much. And, thank you. And Izzy, of course. We'll see you uh, for the next session in a moment. Thank you. Thank you, very thank much. you so much.